Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Families Fly Free podcast. I am Lynn Mettler. Today, we are going to talk about cruising on Disney. And because I've never been on a Disney cruise, what's wrong with me? I don't know. Um, (laughs) I have brought on an expert who you may remember from our past episode where we talked about Disney at the holidays. So I have with me today, Doug McKnight of the Rope Drop Radio podcast, and he was just recently on The Wish. So um, we recorded our podcast about Disney at the holidays, and then we were both going to be there over Thanksgiving, and we thought, oh, it'd be fun to just cross paths and say hello quickly. And finally, Mm -hmm. within 15 minutes of walking into Hollywood Studios, I spotted Doug off to the side. (laughs) <laughs> which I thought was really funny. Like there, you're just right there. So anyway, so we got to say hello pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then Doug and his family went on to their trip on the Disney wish after that. So welcome back to the podcast, Doug. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was, it was pretty uh, magical as they would say <gasps> at Disney world to right. run into each other. It, <clears throat> you can be in the same theme park all day long and texting back and forth and never see each other. So that worked out really well. Yes, I know. It was super funny. So remind us real quick, tell us, give us a brief introduction for people who haven't listened to the Disney at the Holidays episode. So uh, introduction of Rope Drop Radio, what it is, is a podcast about travel planning for Disney. We cover all kinds of different aspects of Disney World. Uh, We sneak into Disneyland once or twice a year, but it's mostly Disney World. And we try to do it in a fun, different way every week uh, to mix up stuff. We have lots of guests. Also have a spinoff show that's just about cruising, not just Disney, but a little bit of Royal, a little bit of Norwegian celebrity. And that's Rope Drop on Deck. Um, My 13 year old came up with the name because she's like, well, she'd be like Sweet Life, the the TV show. So uh-huh. the Disney Channel influence on the name there. And it's I do good. that I with, like it. yeah. And I do the uh, rope drop radio with my partner, Derek Sassman. Uh, we've been doing it for six and a half years. Yeah, six and a half years. So a little while. And I do the rope drop on deck with my wife, who is a uh, destination specialist with touring plants. So definitely check it out. They are funny. That's what I say. Some <laughs> days. want to be entertained. No, no pressure, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. So let's start. I think you have been on The Wish a couple times. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yes. So I've... tell us a little bit about like where you went, why you were on it, length of trip, that kind of thing. All right. So I've been on The Wish twice. Uh, we originally had... The third sailing on the wish booked. And then as lots of people may be aware or not aware, I got canceled. They canceled the first 12 sailings of the wish and bumped it back. So it was supposed to be in June. And then we ended up being on the third sailing again, which was the first three night sailing uh, in July. So we went on that where it was brand new. There was the inaugural sailing, then a DVC sailing, and then the sailing we were on. And then we were just on it over Thanksgiving. We actually sailed on Black Friday. So we've done Black Friday before on the cruise line, and we really like that, where the parks can keep adding people in. You know, they can open the gate, get the stick out, and poke people into the park. (laughs) You can't do that on a cruise ship because it has to be the right number of beds. So we do like the cruise line when the parks would be super busy. Mm. The ship can't get busier. That's a good tip. It uh, You know, it can get less busy sometimes, but that's usually because there's a hurricane somewhere. So. (laughs) Can't been they on it sail twice. around it, right? It, it, on a cruise ship? It, yeah, to an extent, right? But <laughs> um, so we've been on the wish twice, both three nighters. Uh the wish does three and four night sailings basically back to back to back to back to back to back to back. It's like Groundhog's Day for the crew members. And so you go from Port Canaveral to Nassau to Castaway Key back to Port Canaveral. That's your your itinerary. If you have a four-night sailing, you're going to have a day at sea in there where you essentially don't go anywhere. You just kind of bob around in the, the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. So um, that's that's what we did. Three nights, both times, and uh, very different experiences. One was just my wife and I essentially working, and then one was with our kids. So we got to experience all the new and different things with our children and get their take on it. 
Awesome. And the Disney wish is the newest Disney ship. Mm -hmm. I forgot to say that. Yes. Um, And I know I hear from lots of you who want to, you know, who are planning Disney cruises and there, everyone wants to know about the Disney wish too. So Mm -hmm. I thought this would be a great opportunity. Yes. It's the sparkly new ship. Disney now has five ships just to run it down. You have the magic, the wonder they're the oldest ship from the nineties. And then the dream and the fantasy, they're from mid 2000s. And now the wish and soon the treasure was oh. the next one on order. It's been a long time coming for a new ship then. Mm-hmm. There have been some good little gaps. And so it was time. They need something. Uh, and just for the record, so the magic and the wonder, they have a capacity of about 2,700 people. And then the dream and the fantasy really stepped it up to 4,000 people. And then the the wish has the same capacity as the dream and the fantasy, same number of people. However, the size of the ship. So to bore everybody real quick, as my wife would say, I can hear her yelling at me right now. The gross tonnage, which is a measure of volume um, okay. for the dream and the fantasy, the, the other two ships that are big is one, 129,000. So 129,000 gross tonnage for the dream and the fantasy, but for the wish it's 144,000. So it got a lot bigger, but the capacity stayed the same. So we'll discuss where that space went as we go along. Okay. Yes. Whether they used it. It's bigger, (laughs) not for people, not for rooms. So for things. Okay. All right. Well, you're, you're teasing us with what that will be. Yeah. I got to keep them listening. (laughs) So tell us, You know, what makes the Disney wish better, different? What sets it apart from the other ships that you just talked about, aside from gross tonnage? Oh, man, that's, today. Gross tonnage is so much fun. Um, <laughs> so the the biggest change you'll notice right when you walk in, all the other four ships have a similar theme and color and feel to them of nautical sort of theme. Uh, but you have like Art Deco or Art Nouveau on the other ships. Here, I don't know what the exact, it's not Art Deco or anything like that, but it's it's more like royal, if that's a word, not the okay. cruise line, but like princessy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very pretty. And so a ship has an atrium. That's the big gathering space in the middle you walk right onto that on all all the ships and they announce your name and there you are but on the wish it's called the grand hall instead of the atrium i'm not sure if that's an actual nautical term but they're calling it the grand hall it it is massive so that's the first thing you notice it it is bigger prettier so they they went for pretty um and that That's one of the big noticeable things. The pool deck is also way wider, which to get the pool deck wider, you got rid of some tables and chairs that are on the other ships. Like when you're comparing it directly to the dream and fantasy or the dream class ship, uh, it's it's a wider space, which is great for the deck parties and that sort of thing. Like pirate night with the fireworks. it's, It's fantastic. Now, when you're trying to find a table to eat your barbecue, Maybe not. So there's this give and take on a ship because square footage is at a premium. Uh, so it's designed more for those big gatherings and those gathering spaces. However, one complaint, like other cruises we've been on, you would go to like a family game show in what's called the D lounge, which is the family lounge. And there might be like three other families in there, but it was a huge venue and it felt empty at times. Now a day at sea, it never felt empty. It was usually full. But on other times, it felt empty. So what they went for was a lot of smaller venues. So you start to notice that, like, they took the other things and made more of them, but smaller. And there's no adult district. So on the other four ships, the adult area is, like, contained, sealed up in one little spot. All Mm -hmm. the bars are together, except for, like, bars you kind of walk up to. But like the real adult, the nightclub, all that stuff, one spot. Now it's kind of spread out, sprinkled, if you will, through the ship. And how Um, how was that? You know, I don't spend a lot of time in a nightclub, so (laughs) it didn't Didn't bother bother me too much. much. Um, 
I like, so there's a venue called Tiana or the Bayou and it's right off that grand hall and they have live music. It's a bar. There's beignets. And during the day they do craft activities or trivia and that venue works really well. And it's very accessible. You walk past it all the time, but then there's some others that it's like too small to actually function for trivia or karaoke and things like that. So there's some give and take. They got some things right, but some things dreadfully wrong. Oh, really? Yeah. So it now, if you haven't ever been on a Disney cruise, it's all 100% right. Great. Yay. Right. You don't know what else they had. There's no D lounge, which the other four ships all have. <laughs> and and what is having, that? so that's the, the, the D lounge is the family activity kind of center hub. There's all the game shows, the animation classes and trivia. They, they host things all day long in it. And it was a big space. So, and then there was also nightclub on all the other ships. Uh, so like evolution or the tube for people that have been on some, just for an example, but on the wish, they kind of took the two and merged them together. So, and they made Luna is the bigger venue. And so it's kind of weird having the match your mate game going on right in the center of the ship where you can kind of hear it going on as your kids wander by to other activities. Match your mate can get kind of, it's probably the only very adult thing that happens on a Disney cruise, but it's, it's just weird the way they, they merge the two things. So I don't, I don't know. And of course, that first three nighter, the crew was still trying to figure out, like, how do we use this? Mm. And, and they kind of figured it out by Thanksgiving. They had definitely made some changes. So uh, dining also is a big change. Uh, they just there's two dinner shows instead of like one. So you have a frozen restaurant. It's way more themed. How about that? That's, that's what's different. Okay. If, Frozen restaurant, you have Arendelle, where there's live music, singing. At one time, you have to sing Let It Go. I They told you you had to, so I did. <laughs> when I you're smiled. making the res- Oh, well, while you're sitting there, they told you. While yeah. you're sitting there. Yeah, it's part of the show. Me it's singing. not when you're making reservation. I'm sorry, are you willing to sing Let It Go? <laughs> no, it, no. It's, <laughs> no, so this is part of the rotational dining. So Disney Cruise Line does rotational dining for their main dining halls. So the three are 1923, which is like a classic steakhouse, if you will. That's very good. Great steak. And then you have Arendelle, which is the frozen themed one where there is live music. And, uh, oh, the shopkeeper. Why can't I remember his name? Uh, Olaf is there. Kristoff's there. It's the whole gang's there. Oaken. There you go. He's like the main MC of the night. And. You come out of there with like you stuck in your head <laughs> yes. for days. It's rough. <laughs> um, and then there's the Marvel World of Marvel restaurant where it's eight gazillion screens, and they have like a little thing that plays throughout the night, kind of in between courses. And it's it's if you're a Marvel fan, it's fantastic. If you're not a Marvel fan, you're like just give me my food. So it's that has its audience probably more so than. Frozen. Frozen is live music. There's someone playing the violin and it's just music is music where the Marvel is very specific taste, but I enjoyed it because I'm a big nerd. So, but that was some, that was some of the bigger changes. And the ship also does not have a running path all the way around it, which angers my son. Um, When we were in Europe this summer on the magic, he ran like 700 miles no he, he ran he ran 440 miles last summer for cross country oh so, i used to have a cross country runner yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so every day he ran on that path i don't know how many miles but it was more than i even care to calculate and so the wish doesn't have it. it's like not even a horse it's weird i but I think the number of people that are really affected by the lack of running path is actually pretty small. It's like my son and all of the cast members in the stage show, right? That's you're the, on there for three right? days, right? So, yeah. but I, if you're a cross country runner, you have to run every day, but yes. that's why from that, right? That's like the only people it really affects. <laughs> and then he falls in this weird bubble of too young to go to the gym on his own, but nowhere mm-hmm. for him to run. So 
yeah, but all kinds of great features. The, there's like 75 different pools, I swear. Every time you turn around up top on the top deck, you run into another pool. Like, there might Did be those like get 13. very full. Um, during the middle of the day in Nassau, they get full, mm -hmm. but on a sea day, they get full. But there's lots of them, and they're all different depths. So you can find the one that's the right depth for your children and not have to worry about them. Where mm -hmm. other times you have like one big pool, but it's like they just can't quite touch, you know. And so there's lots of them. And uh, there's some that are kind of hidden back around the corner. And of course, there's a couple water slides going on and all that. And there's a little kid's splash area, too. Yeah, I was looking at the water slide. So mm -hmm. that's some kind of you're seeing something while you're in the slide, I'm guessing, right? Yes. So the feature slide is the Aqua Mouse. Uh, just for reference, the Fantasy and Dream have the Aqua Duct. And mm -hmm. then the uh, Magic has the Aqua Dunk. And the Wonder is sadly just without a feature slide. Um, so and they also have other slides on, on each ship. But the big one, so it's a water coaster. It, mm -hmm. You go up a long conveyor belt thing, and they say it's an attraction at sea here because they have screens showing you a story. Um, oh. Yeah, so it, it's, so yeah, so you're watching a story. It's kind of like the same animation style as the Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Absolutely. It looked look like that, yeah. Yep, yep. And then, uh, and then mm -hmm. you, you know, you're in a water slide basically in a tube i will say the line moves slow so you want to rope drop that sucker or, <laughs> <Of course. laughs> yeah. or you, rope drop comes to play on a cruise ship oh it does you want to rope drop dinner you want to rope drop the aqua mouse oh gosh mm -hmm. rope, there's a few other things you it's a uh, um <laughs> the other great time is your day at castaway if you leave the beach Say you're not the biggest beach person in the world, but you want to go on the slide, you know, go back a little early, beat the crowd back to the ship and go straight up to the aqua mouse and hit that up. That works on all the ships for trying to do that. But uh, it's it's interesting. It's a, you sit in a little raft. It's awkward for an adult human being to get in and out of the raft without looking like a beached whale. <laughs> and the best part is as you're standing in line, you're watching everybody else doing it and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to look like that. And then yes, yes, you do. That's, <laughs> and of course, kids just like plop down. They're, they're all flexible. Ugh. So I don't know. Next time I go on, I, I need to work on my flexibility to get in and out of the aqua mouse better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good goal. So I always get confused on cruise dining. Mm-hmm. I'm like, now, can I just go to any restaurant? Can I, I have to go to the same restaurant every time with whatever. And then I have to have, wear different clothes on different days. So can you the, explain the different all that clothes? All yes. You Disney? have to wear different clothes every day. Well, okay. I have to wear fancy <laughs> clothes one day. I know. I have to wear, you know. <laughs> I, I got you. I, I can't just, wear the same clothes every day. I'm some people might actually, when we are in Greece, so we did a nine night Greek Isle cruise on the magic this summer. And wow. <laughs> um, a lot of luggage got lost in Rome. We sailed in and out of Rome for the embarkation. And um, so there was a lot of people dressed from the gift shops on our cruise. <laughs> and then funny. as the cruise went along, you could tell like, oh, now they're wearing stuff from port because it was all like blue and white striped. It was, you know, the touristy cheap, right? It was uh, yeah, so they wore the same. There was one guy, I think he wore the same shirt for nine nights. At dinner. <laughs> he Poor bought guy. it the first day. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> Disney, so every cruise line does it a little different. There's main dining, that's kind of an industry standard term. So, on like Royal, like there's main dining halls, but it's you go to the same spot each night, same restaurant. The menu might change, it the might menu's not. different, right? Right. <laughs> Okay. But you're so. you're sitting in the same spot, and that's pretty much the industry standard. So what Disney did when they were like, we're going to do cruising different, which sometimes does work and sometimes doesn't, they decided to have rotational dining. So they have three different dining halls, so probably the same number of dining spaces that, like, say, the other cruise lines would have, but they're very different themes. So you go from one to the next to the next each night. 
and your service team goes with you. So they get to know you. So by the end of a nine night cruise, they're your new best friends. They follow you on Instagram, all that sort of stuff by the end of a cruise. Like your steward. And, that's another one yep. you become friends with, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah. But on a three night cruise, they like the last night they're like, so you want the diet Coke? And I'm like, yep. And then they get it where on a nine night cruise, the diet Coke is just sitting there waiting for me. Mm. So that's one good thing about rotational dining. Plus each dining room has its own theme going on and its own kind of thing. And if you're on a four night cruise, you there's three dining halls. So what do you do for the fourth night? You go back to one of the others. It's scheduled. They tell you which one you go back to. You don't get just, just to pick. Um, but there's a different menu that night. You never have the same menu. So on the four night wish, that additional menu is pirate night menu. So yeah, that that's different. your fourth menu. And yeah, you don't get to pick the order. You don't get to pick your table, but you kind of get to know your servers. You're in very different spots from restaurant to restaurant. Like we were table 407 on that first sailing, and it might've been the worst table in the fleet. So if anybody listening goes on the Disney wish and they check their, their table assignment, when you're sitting in port, when you can first get on the app and really navigate all this, if your table 407, your first step is to go to the dining team and ask for a different table <laughs> because the table in Arendelle is horrible. It's literally in the corner. The table in Marvel is in an area that looks like it was part of the hallway for the kitchen, but they were like, we have to have one more table. So they put it there. I, I'm pretty confident they moved the high chairs to put this table there. You know, the corner where you stick the high chairs, that's mm -hmm. where that table is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember our table number on the last cruise, but it was decent. It was good. We enjoyed it. Um, if there is no perfect table in Arendelle, you're either close to the stage or you're going to be close to the, where the characters walk around because they walk around a path. And they don't deviate from that path. They don't come take pictures with you. So you can be close to that. But if you're close to the stage, you're not going to be close to the characters walking and saying hi. So no perfect table. But then you throw in adult dining. So you could yeah, book. So can I go to a, to the steakhouse, for example? Yes, you could book Paolo's Steakhouse instead. But then like on The Wish, if you're doing three nights, you're going to miss one of those main dining halls. So if you've never been on the wish, I would say stick with the main dining. Um, okay. But you also have Paolo and Remy or Enchante on the wish. My bad is even more upscale. And those are additional charge. Paolo is like 50 bucks. I can't remember the exact price. It will change by the time this comes out. They like to do that when I say numbers. Um, and then Enchante is even more. I am not fancy enough person for Enchante. So I have not gone there. We also did not get into Palo on our previous two cruises because you have to book that reservation right when it opens. So remember so I teased. What does that mean? Like, so, when it op like it opens that day? No. So with cruising. Or when the reservation opens. When your reservation opens. So like your status allows you to book things at different times. And so like platinum people get to book first and then gold and then silver. And then the, the people that have never been for some reason. So <laughs> um, crazy people. Yeah. And so you, you know what time or what day you can do that. And you stay up till midnight Eastern and you do it because people are crazy. Oh, that sounds like genie plus to me. A, a little bit. You don't have to, but I would recommend it. But so for the wish, remember how we talked about there's all this extra space, but not more people. A lot of that extra space went to concierge. There's more concierge deck space, more concierge lounge space, and a lot more concierge rooms. So concierge people, they pay for it. So I'm not saying they shouldn't. They get first access to reservations for things like Palo, Enchante, Cabanas on Castaway. So as a platinum cruiser, I have yet to get into Palo on the Wish because the concierge people tend to fill it all up on a three night cruise. Grant, I was on a three nighter, not a four night where there's more availability. But yeah, so if you're not sailing concierge, just don't worry about Palo. Just enjoy the three main dining halls. This is all very interesting. I didn't know like all these different levels and it's complicated. It's just like yeah. Disney, you got to get it, your 
reservations to end early. <laughs> yep. Yep. And so like on the magic and the wonder, the two <laughs> smaller ships, it's a lot easier to book certain things because there's less people and like the less concierge makes a big difference. Um, now, like I said, though, the concierge people pay for that, right? God bless them. I wish I could, but I, I like to go more frequently. than. And like, what else do concierge people get? Uh, well, they have a lounge where there's drinks and stuff that are included and more service. The The exclusive deck area, from what I'm told, is very nice. I, they get things just... Better rooms. I have not stayed there yet. It's still on the old list to check off at some point, stay in concierge. And I have friends that do it all the time and they love it. And I, I'm glad they talk to me, even though I'm, you know, on deck two at times. Do um, Disney Vacation Club people get any special benefits? Um, so, yes, when bookings open. So when they announce new cruise itineraries are coming out. Usually the one day platinum can book and then the next day gold and then the next day silver. And I guess I should say the castaway members. So it goes, you're nothing if you've never been right. And then you're silver. If you've been on one. So after your first cruise, then you're silver. Then after your fifth cruise, you're gold after your 10th cruise, you're platinum. And I keep forgetting they added a level after your 25th cruise, you are pearl. So they just added pearl. So I guess it will go pearl, platinum, gold, silver. So, so what are you? I am platinum. I've been on 14, oh, I think. Wow. Yeah. So we've done all the ships. Uh, we've done lots of different destinations on Disney, like Alaska, Bermuda, out in New York, two different European, Miami. Oh. Yeah. So we've, yeah. we've done, we've, we've spread it out too. Um, but uh yeah, booking those things, being platinum helps a lot. But on the wish, the concierge people beat you to it. Okay. That's the one big negative. Unless you're concierge, then it's fantastic. because It's more space. Yeah. All right. Um, so what about the shows on the Disney Wish? All right. The Disney Wish has three shows. The, the first one, I always confuse the name of with what we saw in the magic it's a shorter show it's mini and goofy seizing the adventure i think it sees the adventure someone's yelling at me if i got that wrong right now it's just i do that frequently but it's it's a musical type thing where lots of different characters sing you, you have everything from hercules to um go with the flow from the finding nemo show in the parks does so anyone remember the hercules movie well, yeah, I mean, same every <laughs> every nighttime spectacular, they That's use the music everywhere. Well, so it's kind of don't even know that it's yep. It's Hercules. you. So I think a lot of people in the audience, Hercules comes out and sings goes goes distance, and I think a lot of people are like oh. That's what that's from because it was in Wishes, it was in Happily Ever After, it was in Enchantment, it and Happily Ever After again. It's in Harmonious. Oh, it's I, everywhere. I love Harmonious. It's in Harmonious. Mm -hmm. They weave it in everywhere, and you know, of course, a song about a Greek person is in Harmonious, where there is no Greece in World Showcase. Of so course. don't <laughs> don't get me started on Harmonious. That's dead and gone. It's, <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, so you have one that's basically a musical um, medley, so to speak, of Disney classics, and Goofy learns that he can do it. And then that was a spoiler, sorry. And then uh, <laughs> Little Mermaid is their big like theatrical show, uh, great production value, lots of projection mapping, and great technical stuff. They they do make some plot changes, folks. So buckle up, it's okay. It's a story. It can be told different yeah, ways. People don't like that. I know. That's why I said buckle up. It's mm -hmm. just take it, take it easy. It's not a retelling of the movie. Little Mermaid has lots of variations. It's almost exactly, but like there's some songs that aren't in there. The end is a little different. It might be a little more empowering to women, which is a great thing. Some people don't like that. 
So we'll see how The Little Mermaid that comes out this summer, the movie ends. I'm yeah. curious now if I the think production, that's a hint. right? If the production of the cruise line knew what was happening in the movie because the movie had been slowed down because of COVID. I think it's a year later than originally from when it got greenlit, right? But they never really gave it a date for a long time. So maybe the plot changes were going to show up in this movie. And um, and the people we've seen, the cast both times was very different people, but phenomenal vocalists, very good, very entertaining. Uh, There's puppets involved for fish, our fish friends and our bird friends. And uh, we, on our first cruise, Michelle and I, we tend to eat dinner or lunch, lunch on the, the, the deck food with the uh, puppeteers. We sat in the same place as they did each day. So Ooh. we didn't know them, but we knew them. Here, that reminds me, what happened to the Little Mermaid show at Hollywood Studios? Is it just on hiatus and it's coming back or? I mean, maybe the when the tram hilarious. comes back, it will come back. I don't, it's, it's the last holdout, right? It's it it hadn't been updated for a long time uh, from the and technical so side. Oh, it, it's so mm-hmm. clever. Yeah, and it's you know actual actors, so it costs money. Mm. And I think there's some things they need to do to the theater because I mean they were still shooting lasers across there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the same special effects we saw in the 90s that so were like, ooh, lasers. Now it's like, oh, lasers. <laughs> so old school right yeah so i think that's part of it they just don't want to update it and mm. i don't know just stick a moana show in we'll there down it. then right it's, i don't know they need it though they need every bit of capacity of hollywood studios they can get but the the show on the wish is phenomenal i enjoy it um i really liked it both times i'm, I'm that guy that stood up to clap and the second time the theater did not all stand up with me, but I'm guessing they have never performed on a stage before to know what that's like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, once you perform, or if you've performed, you know, you stand up, you clap. It's it's what you do. And then the last night is Aladdin. And that is a retelling. There is an additional song in there um, that was cut from the movie. So it's an Alan Minkin song as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been on the fantasy for a decade now. So it's they brought that show over. So it's about on the fantasy and on the wish. The one great thing about the Aladdin show, even though I've seen it on the fantasy and it's a retelling, the genie is hilarious. And he made jokes about genie plus and things like that. Also jokes about old Bob, new Bob, because of the Bob switching as the CEO. So I heard you talking about that on your on your podcast and so do they just they just bring in something contemporary to make it timely and relevant is that so i so he basically has you know room to ad lib and i know that it's we've seen on the fantasy one time we saw a matinee on some of the longer cruises you have day at seas they'll throw a matinee out at like three o'clock and i've seen it twice in the same day one time because i was just curious if the ad libbing Um, was identical like down to the you know like a metronome running it because with all the lights and production of these type of shows sometimes like you miss a mark it's bad for the trickle down effect right if if you're in theater you know what i'm talking about but no he has he different things he said different jokes at times so kind of like the jungle cruise like they're on a schedule but like they don't tell the same jokes so i think he just genie gets some artistic freedom and that's what makes it a great show do i recommend seeing it twice at the same cruise no no go do something else usually you have if you have early dining you're at dinner then you have the late show that you go to if you have late dining then you have the early show to go to they make so it they, so that are you, you do booked both. for that already or do you have you're, a book? Not, you're not really booked for the shows you just go um the only thing is, mm-hmm, yeah um because half the ships at dinner mm-hmm at a time half the ship goes to the show lots of people don't go to the shows they just sit on the pool deck watch funnel vision i don't know go to the a bar i people do other things there are lots of bars we did not talk about that did we there's there's the hyperspace lounge i believe what it's called yes and that is a star wars theme bar 
So mm-hmm. it has screens behind it. You jump into light speed all the time. And it looks pretty cool. Is it? It, it does. If I had not been on the Halcyon, I would have thought, well, this is amazing. But I'd been on the Halcyon. So it was like this is eh. on the Star Wars. Yeah. The Star Wars, the Star Cruiser. That's the Halcyon. That, that's, that's yeah. a whole other thing. Yeah. I yeah that's a whole nother. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other episode. Whole another thing, but yeah, it's it is pretty cool. Um, my kids liked it. I mean, they went in and looked at it. We didn't sit down and have a drink with them. They do have blue milk for the kids, which, which I don't know if that's good or bad. Right? Yeah, it's sorry, kids. Here's I your have blue not milk. dared to try it. Uh, I don't it's, think my kids have either. It's not really milk. That's part of the problem. But um, it's it's interesting. There's several other themed bars there's one called nightingales that you know that name comes from cinderella uh cinderella is the statue in the grand hall as well and nightingales is just off of that so because that's like the song that her stepsisters are singing so that's a got a piano in it um, but it was closed most of the time for private events that's where they do a lot of the uh alcohol tastings um different things you can sign up for so there's um enchanted rose something like that bar up in the by enchante which that's adults only too so bars abound you can find one at, you know like walt disney's like we want a trash can every 20 feet at disneyland the dcl uh motto is we need a bar every 25 feet <laughs> so which is, seems weird on a disney cruise so like are there are there adults who have imbibed too much at the bars which doesn't seem like you know i don't <laughs> Disney cruise? I, if there's so I have many not, I I I've seen some people be intoxicated, mm-hmm. but not to the point where it's like uh they need to do something with this person. Yeah. Like the point of they're not gonna like it in the morning, type of ha 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 drunk person. Glad they don't, you know, you can't get in your car and drive, you're on a boat. So it's just it, with all the kids around, like it would that would make more sense to me to have the adults area be separate a little so more isolated that over there but yeah because if somebody does get a little too much in the evening now they're just in the middle of the ship where before it was like ah let's go from this bar to this bar and they could it's only a few steps and nobody sees them but other adults where now it's you're kind of out and about so epcot is a little bit like that on yes Friday, saturday night Ep- <laughs> epcot is way there worse than kids. the cruise line <laughs> trust me way worse uh-huh. mm-hmm. I, I think the cost around the world. So right, I think the the cost prevents the 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 entry fee to cruise prevents a lot of people that are just going to go and drink, and that's what they're there for because you've paid too much to do that. Hmm. Right, there is no drink package, so to speak. There's different packages, but no like like Royal Caribbean, you can get a package that like you walk up to the bar, you get a drink, like you just on repeat. Like mm-hmm. your liver doesn't know what's happening type of thing where Disney Cruise Line doesn't have that. So I think that limits it. Plus alcohol is not cheap. And yeah. it's one of the few things you pay for. Uh, we can get through cruises without paying for anything. It's fantastic. Okay. So let's talk about then that's a good segue into how okay. do you save any tips for saving? Like once you're on it or before you go? Both. Okay. Before you go, <laughs> The best tip is to book when it opens. Uh, I mentioned the the release dates and like being able to book. The cruise price usually only goes one direction, and that is up. As the ship fills up, capacity comes lower. Like there's less to sell, so prices go up. Uh, so that's one way to save beforehand. The other way to save beforehand would be the old gift card trick. You use that for the parks. You know, you go to Target, use your red card, buy a gift card. You go to Sam's or Costco or just BJ's. Is that the name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, a few dollars less. Every dollar is a dollar, right? So you could buy a bunch of gift cards, put them together, and then have your travel agent use that gift card to pay for it or you pay for it that way. I would consolidate those first. Um, Well, just I'm just going to pause you there just to quickly explain that because that was sort of a newer concept to me as well. And I just had a webinar last night and side families fly free where we talked about how to get your theme park tickets free and or how to just save on them. And we went through this whole 
gift card thing. So the idea there is you're buying Disney gift cards at a discount. Mm-hmm. Like the, like you mentioned Target. To me, Target was like the just the general easiest. I'm all about yes. keep simple. That's just this. I've had a red card for a million years. You get 5% off of everything, apparently, including Disney gift cards. So you buy, you save 5%, and then you use that to buy park tickets or buy your cruise and you can mm-hmm. load up on however many you want. And then, like I said, there's this, a site where you can consolidate them all onto one card. Um, but I will just throw out a couple other tips that um, inside Families Fly Free, like we should talk about, we have lots of Chase like many of our travel cards are Chase. Mm -hmm. So Chase has Chase offers. So if you're in your Chase app, you can like, they'll have 20% off at Best Buy, like was one they had recently. You can, you know, add that offer to your card. It might just be your debit card even. Um, And then go to Best Buy, buy a Disney gift card. We had someone who had worked on gift cards and then you just got 20% off. And then now you're really talking. But um, so there's so like Doug is saying, there's like a Many different ways yeah. to do this, but that's the general idea. Yes, Target's the easiest, but the offer one's a good thing. I've done that before. Also, when I'm at Sam's, I try to remember I get points when I buy the gift card as well as the couple dollars off the gift card. And so. you can also start at, for my Southwest Flyers, you can start at the Southwest Rapid Reward Shopping Portal. So like you can, uh, yeah. you're doing BJ's or like Sam's club is six points per dollar in there right now. So if you're doing that one, you click through to Sam's club from there, you're getting your discounted gift card, but you also earn six Southwest points per dollar on what you just spent there. There's about that one gets really confusing. You can stack and stack and stack mm-hmm. on that, but anyway, right. you got totally yeah. off. so that's, that's, a, that's the best ways to save on a that's looking usually, through. especially if like, you can only cruise. Th- this is the date you're going on this one. If you're flexible, the shoulder seasons are going to be cheaper. Now, shoulder seasons and cruising is hurricane season. That's where it's going to be cheaper because you're going at hurricane season. It's a legitimate risk. Your cruise could get canceled or altered or be quite choppy. We've had that happen. Um The other thing is a guaranteed stateroom. This is where you book a level of stateroom, but you don't get to pick the room. So it'd be like going to a hotel. You don't pick your hotel room, right? You you just, you book at the hotel, you show up, they give you a room. Cruising is not the same. You, when you book it, you pick a specific room, which is one reason like having someone that's been on that ship or experienced that ship class is valuable because there are some rooms that are above the nightclub or below the kids club or, you know, things like that. Like, well, that's right by the theater. Do you like sleeping? You know, so there's little things like that where you can book the guaranteed state room. And it's usually the rooms that are left empty, which are going to be the, by the kids club, by the nightclub, that sort of stuff. Um, We got, our room got messed up in Europe and they had to move us. And like, I was not like, having where they're moving us to i was like no this is not our fault we booked midship we're getting midship and so we ended up with the room across the hall from the laundry room there was a reason it was open but Mm -hmm. it was a significant upgrade from what we had booked so Uh i couldn't complain about the laundry room no it's because i wasn't on deck two anymore i was on deck seven so it that's where you can save as a guaranteed, but you don't get to pick your room. And some people say it will do it once and be like, I'm never doing that again. And there's other people. That's the only way they cruise is they only book that it's the cheapest. Um, the other way to save beforehand would be book inside. Guess what? All the rooms go to the same place. The inside cabins and the outside, the ones with the verandas, you just don't have a veranda to go sit on, especially on the wish for only three nights. You don't spend much time on that veranda. You're so busy. It's so quick. The inside can save you money. Are they super small? Like that's on my princess cruise. We did have one with the veranda and I looked in one that was interior and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I would be claustrophobic in here. It was so small, no window. I need a a light source, you know? So (laughs) Disney on average is larger than an industry standard. Okay. So their rooms are a little bigger. Um, the dream class ships have the virtual porthole, so they have a window. That's a good idea. So to speak. That would help. Um, so <laughs> there's there's some variations. <laughs> um, I've I've done 
every room class just about except for those concierge rooms we've done inside all the way up to you know family deluxe family verandas so it just kind of depends on how we're booking what we're booking um, and you but, have a family of five right yes so how does that work how do you work for a family of five there well there are some rooms that sleep five okay. so that's what the the deluxe really and just means sleeps five so there's deluxe ocean view rooms and deluxe deluxe family ocean view deluxe family and verandas those sleep five they have a queen size bed which is super comfortable by the way i don't know what, what's so magical about it but there's something i don't know if there's little gnomes inside there massaging you to sleep <laughs> there's something and then there's a couch that turns into a, a bed it kind of flips down and then there's a bunk above it that comes down and you have that in lots of the rooms to sleep four. but with the deluxe family rooms it's a little bit bigger more square footage and there's a bed that comes out of the wall right in front of the veranda or window so everybody gets their own sleeping surface when you have three kids, which is so where's the, the best so thing two ever. in the flip down bed. And then where's the fifth one? So there's the couch bed. There's the and bunk a, bed. So they're okay. stacked. And then on the end of that is the one out of the wall that flips down on the floor. So there's there, three. I think Disney's very creative in how they. Beds. Yeah. They're sticking them that. everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and that's the same on the dream fantasy to the to the wish where you see those rooms but now that our kids are older um we have booked two state rooms that adjoin and so like in europe both times we booked deck two inside adjoining rooms which are the about the cheapest rooms on the ship it like i said it goes to the same places so um and then there's other cruises where we'll book a standard veranda, not the deluxe family, because we don't want, we don't need that extra bed by the wall. So we've, we do a little bit of everything, but we really like having two bathrooms now with three teenagers. Yeah. That's when we yeah. did our first Disney vacation club. I originally booked a one bedroom and with all boys, except me, <sighs> <laughs> they were all way taller than me. That was tough to put an 18 year old and a 14 year old in a shared bed. So, but yeah. I was able to figure it out to where the second half we could move to a two bedroom. And that was so much more, it, yeah, because it's just harder when they get older, but they're just, they're bigger. Yeah. They take up more space and and when they, when they fight it's worse because they're bigger. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice. We put them in one room. We have the room next door. I shut and lock the door. It's yeah. I, so if you had like a family of six or more, you'd have to do the two. Rooms. Two, yep. Okay. Yep. And so you could do 10 people connecting. That'd be frightening, but you could. Um, so yeah, the connecting rooms. Wow. And, you know, sometimes the two inside state rooms connecting are cheaper than the deluxe family room with just one room for five, especially on the oldest two ships because there's not as many family of five rooms so the price goes up faster on those because that Make category sure you're checking your prices mm -hmm. and not assuming something yep. would be cheaper or sometimes it's only a couple hundred dollars more to have the two rooms or if you're going on like a seven night and it's a thousand dollars more to have two rooms uh, might want to consider it so okay. uh, this was how to save money on board wasn't it we got i got way off well, I did want to ask you about the yeah. rooms, though. So okay, we, so good. we, we sidetracked. We got the rooms. They're nice. And there's a curtain that separates you from the other beds. So, like, your kids are over there. You pull the curtains like they don't even exist. Um, the Wish does have a bigger TV, but it's mounted in front of the bed. So if you pull that curtain over, all of a sudden your kids can't see it. That is one drawback. And there's not a ton of storage on the Wish. It's like they knew this is three or four nighters. Nobody needs 25 drawers. No. So um, we like to unpack. So, of course, my wife had words for the Disney person that designed that. But mm -hmm. there's, they're, they're pretty rooms. On the Wish, they're princess themed. You have like Tiana and Moana and Frozen. And they're different from different room to room. So like when we adjoined with our kids, they had a different theme room than we did. Okay. Well, yeah. that's good. Yeah. 
something. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about saving on booking. So um, Cammie on my team, she goes on lots of cruises, but she swears by the first week of December. Now this is not a Disney cruise. So um, does that hold at all with Disney? I think so. Cause you're before the holidays, um, you, the holidays make the price spike, just like any other travel, basically a general travel pattern and pricing would impact cruising. Spring break is probably more expensive because people are done with winter and want to go somewhere warm yeah. so that you see a bigger spike in price there and summers are stupid expensive but uh hurricane season is the only difference that can make some of those october sailings cheaper than what you would see say like at disney world pricing um and if it's not cheaper it's because demand is so high but this last year, we did see like our first true Disney Cruise Line discount in forever. And that was a Disney Plus discount. So we're not sure if that was more because they really want people to subscribe to Disney Plus or if they needed so. people to book cruises. <laughs> right. Because everybody I know rebooked their cruises for a lot less money and it didn't sell any Disney Plus subscriptions. So, um, so can you just can you cancel then and rebook? Yes and no. So you can't have your name on like you can't like if you were already booked and you wanted to do that deal that came out, you had to cancel all the way and rebook. But here's the the problem is if you wanted early dining and if you rebook too late, early dining might be gone and you're stuck with late dining or you're on the wait list for late dining. So booking early gives you those choices. If it's already after you have made certain reservations for excursions, those would fall away as well. So last minute deals, if you're already booked, don't work real well. You'd have to be willing to give up some things. And if you're already paid in full, the different policies to get out are different at different times. So it has to be far enough out. So not quite like the parks where you can add the deals as easily, but there's also not usually the deals to add. I don't think there'll be any deals on the wish for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There just aren't going to be any. So um, any quick tips to save on board? The best tip to save on board is just not to spend money. So. Well, that just goes across everything, doesn't it? Right. It does, <laughs> but it's very easy to do. So. Alcohol is probably the biggest expense for most people. That, that's up to you, right? Um, and then after that, you, there's only two restaurants that cost more. So food is included. Room service is included unless it's a prepackaged item. So watch what you order from room service. Don't accidentally order a bag of M&Ms and pay for it. You know, order the chocolate chip cookies. Those are free. Um, the... Food on deck, didn't really talk about that, but it's fantastic. There's barbecue and Mexican and stuff, and that's included. So you don't need to pay for yeah. certain foods. That's a you great can, benefit of cruising. Is just yeah, it's – and so your cost comes from going shopping, which, once again, that's a personal thing. Nobody's making you shop. Um, and the, sh the store, like the Disney theme, th Disney theme store on this ship is smaller and that gets lots of complaints and the high end retail is huge. And it's funny hearing people complain about this and, and it's just like, it's a business. They did the math. They know what makes the money per square foot, right? Yeah. Like they're not putting, giving square feet are expensive on a cruise ship. They're not giving the high-end jewelry one more square foot than they need to. They're doing it for a reason. So um, yeah, don't go buy a crazy expensive watch that costs as much as your whole cruise. And that saves you money. Um, soda or pop, depending on where you're at in the country, what you want to call it, it's pop to me. But <laughs> that's it, what I was going to want. Yeah. Right. It's uh, it's enough. included. It's funny. I almost, Coke. We call everything a Coke. Coke. I never said soda in my life until I started podcasting, getting harassed about it. Now, six and a half <laughs> years later, I call it soda. It's it ruined me, those East Coasters. Um, so that's included. It's on the top deck. Um, just be prepared to go get it. Or the best thing about having teenagers, you send your kids after it. Yeah. Um, you could take like a traverse. I the, my handy dandy wish traverse, and you you fill up the cup, and dump it in there. Then you have more at a time because it is just a little cup. Oh. 
Um, so lots of people take refillable bottles for, you know, their Coke zero. Um, and of course it's all Coke products because it's Disney. Thank goodness. Um, (laughs) so that's one way is to like, I'll see people buy pop or soda like at the theater and other places because they will sell it to you too. If you're not on that top deck, they will, they Hmm. have a concession stand outside of the two movie theaters and the Walt Disney theater where the stage shows are. And they have all, all that right there. And you see people buy it every night. There's a place where you can save money is go get the free stuff upstairs. Um, Be prepared. Like you send one kid to get it popcorn. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. They're really good at selling. It smells so darn good. On a longer cruise, you buy the popcorn bucket the first night, and then the refills are cheap. But on a three-night wish sailing, ah, just suffer through. That's how you you, you save money by not spending money on a cruise because it there's enough to do that you don't need to. There's enough to eat. Um, alcohol is the only thing that you know. Mm. Like, there's no way to get alcohol. Actually, the best way to get alcohol cheaply is to book like. Um, a mixology class is it's way too much alcohol that, than you need. Well, some people can handle it. I cannot, but it's going to be cheaper per like, you know, ounce or however you want to measure it per shot. If you do the class, so mm-hmm. book a class. Uh, we talked about this on a couple episodes on rope drop on deck of mixology classes and be prepared okay. to so like, go check that out. Yeah. Um, that was our friend Joe gave a review on that on his dream cruise. Uh, that's the way to drink cheaper would be a class um, excursions that can add up, especially on a longer trip. The cheapest thing to do is just get off the ship and explore on your own. That sounds scary to a lot of people, but there's a lot of ports where it's easy to just get a cab, go to the beach and mm-hmm. then get a cab back. And that's your cheapest excursion. Um, Nassau, which is where the wish goes is not that exciting. We just stay on the ship. If we're on a three night cruise, we explore the ship while lots of people get off. We have gotten off and gone to the straw market. We've gone to the queen steps to the fort. Um, but we have never done Atlantis, which is stupid expensive. Uh, we've done the blue lagoon, which is another popular excursion in Nassau, and if you want to go, you know, pet a dolphin, that's where you do it. But that's where you're spending the money. But if it's what you want to do, you don't budget for it. Um, but you can really save a lot of money on excursions. Now, like in Europe, the excursions, you, you're going to not just go walk off the ship and explore your own and get from the port to Rome because it's an hour away. So you have to have a plan. And the way you save money there is booking private excursions or a third don't party the, don't, book don't book it through it. the cruise line okay uh we did that in alaska as well we went on a float plane and what was hilarious about it we paid half the price that disney was selling it for we were told to meet at this spot we go to the spot we're standing there and then we see we meet our person that was like all right we're gonna get in this van when these other people get here and here we see the disney group getting led right to us and get in the same van go to the same place nice so, but we paid about half the price. Mm. So third huge. party, um, the because Disney doesn't operate any tours. They're all through other third party operators or vendors. So find out who they're using and just book them separate. Sometimes if you have a younger kid, so a lot of excursions have age limits. And this was why we booked the float plane. Uh, one of the reasons through the third party is cruise like Claire wasn't old enough, our youngest to go on the float plane by a year. So then when we checked directly with them, they're like, uh, yeah, she can go. Like, why is there an age limit? Almost. Hmm. They, they didn't were like, well, she can sit in a chair, right? Like <laughs> it's a plane. Like she flew to get to. <laughs> right. That doesn't make so, sense. No. So, yeah. So there's different things like that to work around the age limits as well. Now, sometimes the age limits is a good, good idea, depending on what you're doing, but sitting in an airplane looking out a window i uh, i think she handled that just fine at six but mm-hmm. i think disney wanted her to be seven so um okay so i did want to ask yeah. um what your kids thought about it and then we'll wrap this up here but what was so how did they uh, like it? so my kids are like They're, give us their ages so we can so we have 17 15 and 13 so junior freshman seventh grader so the most critical of like 
I mean, they might as well be the two people in the Muppets bolted to the floor. <laughs> the right. Table, huh? <laughs> right. They're so first thing, well, it wasn't nine nights. Like, well, that's not the question, guys. Oh my gosh. They're just they they're also platinum, so they're spoiled, rotten. Um, and they know that. But they I think they liked the the food on deck. They liked the size of it. They liked the atrium. Um, my son did not like the running path because it didn't exist. So he went to the gym and ran on a treadmill. And my wife had to sit there by him while he ran on the treadmill because he's underaged. He couldn't go by himself. Yeah. yeah. Um, they liked the shows. They did not like how the adult area was not contained to the adult area. Mm -hmm. um the adult pool area is like the most hidden ridiculous small thing on the planet we didn't even go to it so my kids of course didn't see it because they're not adults they did like the vibe the teen club um my son managed to make you know lifelong friends in three nights as he does and so like on instagram he's getting tagged on night one by people (laughs) and his friends from this summer in europe were commenting on it and and one time on Instagram, there's a bunch of teenagers debating, you know, what's better, the magic or the wish. So th- they had fun. Um, yeah. I think they still prefer the dream class ships um, because they're old souls. Really, mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. change is hard. It's <laughs> the wish is just very different than the previous four ships. Like. You know, the buffet is called cabanas on all four ships. Why change what's working? Because that's fun, right? So it's now Marceline Market. And, you know, they added a lot more coffee to the wish, which I'm sure is a complaint. Like, why is there only one place to get a good coffee on the whole ship? So now you can get it like every five steps, just like the bars, there's baristas just everywhere. (laughs) And um, so that ate into some of the seating area of the buffet. So the buffet has less room to sit. That made them grumpy. Um, Because we didn't go to the buffet for our first lunch. And we're like, guys, you don't want to go in there. Like, trust us, we're going to eat out here. We're going to eat the barbecue. We're going to eat the pizza. We have the, you know, Donald's Cantina, which is essentially Chipotle at sea. Um, (laughs) So, you you know, make your own burrito. It's great. And um, so they went into Marceline's eventually and they, they ripped it apart from every standpoint. The first time we went, I... I was just like that though. And like, there's nothing, nothing in here that says Marceline's um, that's Walt Disney's hometown. If you're wondering what that means. Yeah. Marceline, Missouri. I've been there. They have a little museum. They have the farm, a Oak tree. He used to lay under and dream, you know, (laughs) that sort of stuff. The tree's still there. Um, So there's nothing that really says Marceline's other than it looks like somebody went into a home decor store and said anything that looks farmish. (laughs) <laughs> and then they stuck it on the wall. Mm-hmm. So that oh, disappointed sweet. me. I thought there might be like a picture mm-hmm. of Marceline at least somewhere. Cause there's yeah. some, there's mm-hmm. main street USA in Disneyland is kind of modeled after main street Marceline. And there's the railroad uh, is a big part of Marceline as well, which is probably why Walt loved railroads so much. Nothing about trains. Like mm-hmm. they, they, they named it and did them. nothing with it. It was like, what can we name it? Wheel of Names, Marceline's. And then somebody's like, it's a farm in Missouri. It's yeah, it's more than that. So now had I never been to Marceline's, I wouldn't have cared one bit, but I also would have wondered why is it named this? So and they didn't explain why it's named that. I mean, not hit you over the head with it. They could have yeah. had some pictures, some things. I don't know. You you should make the trip. It's not that far. Not yeah, that no, far. Not that it's far, yeah. it's yeah. like kind of a couple states over. Yeah. It's it's interesting. I wouldn't make the trip just for that. I'd like go to Kansas City, do something in Kansas City and or St. Louis and then hit it up from there. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. we'll add it to our list. <laughs> yes. It's a good okay. side trip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so any final thoughts? recommendations for people who um, think they want to get on the Disney wish in the next year or two? I'd say do it. That's the the thought, right? It's the great thing about the wish is it sells those three and four nights. That's also the bad thing about the wish. A lot of people say, why would I go on a three night? Yeah. Well, if you don't have time to go on a seven night cruise, 
the wish is your cruise ship and it's convenient from the theme parks from central florida very easy to get to and from lots of different options on that um that's a whole another show in of itself but uh it's a beautiful ship they have all the amenities you could want except a running path um <laughs> They have a basketball court that's inside they called the hero zone. Um, and then talk about that, but ping pong, foosball, all that sort of stuff. It, the kids club for the little kids is amazing. They have a star Wars area, Marvel area, princess area, like a little Mickey mouse area an Imagineering area, area where you make little rides. So it's, it's got something for everybody. It really is a neat ship. And for three, four nights, you can have a blast and the people I've talked to that have only been on a couple cruises, it's their favorite ship. The people that have all the curmudgeon stuff to say, like me, they've been on lots of cruises. So it's just change is hard. Well, and I do think that, yeah, like part of Disney is just the memories and the nostalgia, mm -hmm. right? So that's probably what they're facing is, oh, we've all done this and this is fond memories for us. And then now it's all, you know, this is a completely different thing. So I get that, how that would be. Where the D lounge is gone. That's where we used to always go, right? (laughs) Yeah. And like all my, so that we, we would eat dinner and then we go to some game show, then go to the theater show every night on like our, we did two seven night cruises one year two years in a row and like that was just what we did and like so we'd run from dinner to the d lounge to the walt disney theater and like so here there's no d lounge so it was kind of like well and plus our kids are older so they don't want to go to the little silly games but they loved them back then and so yes that nostalgia aspect of it but the wish is here to make new nostalgia memories that's right. right. We have to... And the treasure is going to have the same floor plan, basically. So the D lounge, the running path, it's not magically just going to appear out of thin air on the treasure. And when's that one supposed to be coming? I think 2024. And we also have the other ship that they decided to buy the global mm-hmm. dream, which was the world's largest cruise ship by capacity when it was originally planned. And it's for the Asian market. So oh, we'll see what that means exactly and what mm-hmm. they're going to do with that. But it was supposed to have 9,000 passengers. Oh, that's too many people. on a Yeah, ship. that's way too many. <laughs> and then it was going to be, so Disney's already said they're going to scale that back to 6,000. So it's going to be their biggest ship by far. Um, is I think going to be the seventh or eighth largest ship in the world by gross tonnage. Oh, we started uh, with gross tonnage and we shall I always, gross. it's the only way to really know how big a ship is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Doug. If you guys want to hear more about the wish and more about cruising with Disney, check out his new podcast rope drop on deck, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's right? about cruising and rope drop radio for all your Disney world needs. Yes. So um, definitely go check them out. And uh, I guess that will be a wrap on the Disney wish. I hope lots of you get to go enjoy it. Maybe I'll even show up on it one day. (laughs) You should. It's the best way to vacation. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks everyone. We will see you on the next episode.